I'd like to try to come up with a anal analog between absorbency and uh, half-life. Here's a general equation for, for an, a half-life equation, where P sub naught is equal to the initial amount, T sub H is the half-life, little t is equal to the current time, and P is equal to the current amount. What happens is, if I uh, have the current time is one half-life, then I would have P equals P sub naught times one half to the T sub H over T sub H, which cancels out, so I'll have P equals one half P sub naught. We will have one half of the starting amount. If I have two half-lives, I'll have P equals P sub naught times one half times 2 t sub h over t sub h. Those cancel out, and we'll have p equals uh, 1 fourth p sub naught. So the amount left is halved again. Now there's a couple of very similar, but not exactly the same concepts. Absorbance and attenuation, attenuation coefficient. There's a very slight distinction between absorption coefficient and attenuation coefficient. Now the absorption coefficient well, let's uh, face it, it's not given right here. We've got absorbance, we've got molar absorptivity, and neither of them is that really called the absorption coefficient. The attenuation coefficient is given in percentimeters. So let's just use this equation over here uh, in Beer's Law to give us something that would give us a percentimeter. So I have absorbance equals molar absorptivity times path length times the concentration. Now this epsilon is given, or the molar absorptivity is just a reciprocal of centimeters times concentration, length times concentration. And that is multiplied in turn by the path length, which is in centimeters, and the uh, concentration, which is in moles per liter. And I'm going to give this term a I'm going to give this absorb absorption a unit. I'm going to call it decimations. And um, I'll try to explain that. I am misusing the term decimations because decim decim to decimate something means to kill one-tenth of. What I want to mean by a decimate is to destroy all but one-tenth of. So. So the unit on molar absorptivity is a dec one decimation is the number of decimations per centimeter per mole per liter. All right, this according to this decimate means kill or remove a large percentage of. Um, I've heard some people say that decimate means to destroy exactly one tenth of. Well, that doesn't seem to fit with this uh, this. Um, this particular definition, kill, destroy, or remove a large percentage of, it's uh, to do with because 10% isn't particularly large. Uh, so decimate, I'm going to say it means destroy 90% of and leave only 10% left. So, so this is a common uh, thing that I notice is done in in physics is that they never, they'll often give you um, a unitless uh, a unitless number to represent something when we really need some kind of unit to think about it. Now, uh, just to show this uh, this equation right here is I'm going to go ahead and multi and take 10 to the power of both sides of this equation. 10 to the power of a equals 10 to the power of epsilon b c will be equal to p sub naught over p. And if we take the reciprocal of that, 10 to the power of negative a equals 10 to the power of negative epsilon b c equals uh, p over p sub naught, which is the transmittance. So if we start with 100% and, we, and a is equal to 1, then we end up with 10%. If a is equal to 2, we'll end up with 0.01. If a is equal to 3, we'll end up with 0 .00, 0 0.001. It's just for each value of a, you have 
the uh, tr the amount of power uh, incident is uh, decimated once. So how can I relate um, this idea of Beer's law uh, to um, to a half-life equation? Well, let's see if we can't get this uh, equation here written with the uh, We'll switch this 10, 2 to a 10, but otherwise, uh, see if we can put everything else in there the same. First of all, I'm going to multiply this p sub naught by both sides over here by this 10 to the negative a, and the 10 to the negative a is the same as 1 tenth to the positive a, and that a is in turn a uh, piece of naught times 1 tenth to the power of negative epsilon beta c um, or is positive epsilon beta c so um, this is going to be b divided by 1 over 1 over epsilon c um, and this 1 over epsilon c is going to be is going to be equal to our decimation distance it's going to be how far the light can travel down through the substance before it is decimated. So in that way, um, Beer's law has a decimation distance, just as uh, the theory behind exponential decay has a half-life. In fact, there is not much difference mathematically between these two things, um, the exponential decay and uh, Beer's law, except for the fact that exponential decay is, involves a time, a time component, and Beer's law involves a spatial component. The terms attenuation coefficient and absorption co coefficient are generally used interchangeably. However, in certain situations, they are distinguished. When a narrow collimated beam of light passes through a substance, the beam will lose intensity due to two processes. The light can be absorbed by the substance or the light can be scattered, i.e. the photons can change directions by the substance. Uh, just looking at the narrow beam itself, the two processes cannot be distinguished. However, if a detector is set up to measure the light leaving in different directions, or conversely using a non-narrow beam, one can measure how much of the lost intensity was scattered and how much was absorbed. In this context, the absorption coefficient measures how quickly the beam would lose intensity due to the absorption alone, while attenuation coefficient measures the total loss of the narrow beam intensity, including scattering as well. Now I have a question about scattering, and uh, at what point does the scattering become uh, absorption? Because if you scatter things to 90 degrees, then it is completely scattered and it is effectively absorbed. I see here under uh, the, the attenuation coefficient thing in uh, Wikipedia, it says that the Beer-Lambert law says the intensity is equal to the initial intensity times e to the negative alpha x. And I do believe, well, they give this x denoting the path length and and the attenuation coefficient or linear attenuation coefficient is alpha this uh gives the, um, this, uh, what I was calling 1 over epsilon c in the earlier video, they call alpha over rho. Rho is your c, alpha is your 1 over epsilon. So linear attenuation coefficient is also inverse related to the mean free path, which is given here, where L is the mean free path, N is the number of target particles per unit volume, and sigma is the effective cross-sectional area for the collision for a collision.
so the mean free path of um, a photon because here we have we have photons colliding with molecules versus um, here we I think that this descri description involves molecules colliding with molecules but here you see that this mean free path equation is in fact used to derive the Beer-Lambert law here's an, a chart that gives the ambient pressure uh, or ha gives the mean free path at various pressures um, of air I guess so we have mean free paths of 68 nanometers on uh, at regular earth type pressure up to ex an extremely high vacuum as much as 10 as much as a hundred thousand kilometers uh, before the average uh, particle will collide with something else in kinetic theory the the uh, mean free path of a particle such as a molecule is the average distance the particle travels between collisions with uh, moving bodies the formula L equals n n sig 1 over n sigma still holds for a particle with high velocity relative to the velocities of an ensemble of identical particles with random locations so that's a high velocity particle relative to relative to the velocities of the rest of the particles if on the other hand the velocities of the identical particles have a Maxwell distribution which describes particle speeds and gases where the particles move freely without interacting with one another except for very brief elastic collisions in which they may exchange momentum and kinetic energy but do not change their respective states of intermolecular excitation but in any case if the velocities of the identical particles have a Maxwell distribution the mean free path is 1 over square root of 2 n sigma so it's a sort of like a root mean squared uh, path length difference.